The chair recognizes himself for five minutes to speak on the bill. I'm proud to be the lead sponsor of this legislation, which makes common sense practical reforms to help states implement national ambient air quality standards, and I am grateful we will consider it this morning. As I've described in previous hearings, these issues are not hysteric to me. My district is poised to become the industrial and manufacturing hub of the southeastern United States. With the second largest port on the East, Co on the East Coast, access to rail and interstates, affordable and reliable energy, and a supportive business environment, we are ready to grow. But to grow, we need permits, and we need a law that works for people, not one that works against their livelihoods and welfare. Unfortunately, recent EPA actions to set more stringent particle, particulate matter standards underscore the problem and have threatened to make 80% of new and expanded projects impossible because of an inability to obtain air permits. We can fix this. Congress came together in the late 1970s and again in the late 1980s to update the Clean Air Act. Those actions helped set the course for massive improvements in air quality. But as air quality has improved dramatically, the Clean Air Act's decade-old processes now make it more difficult for states to achieve new health standards. The air in communities today is far better than in 1977 or even in 1990. What is not better are requirements designed for the 70s, not the 21st century. Tight review timelines force states to scramble to focus on new standards before they can even implement existing standards. And convoluted rules mean the most effective ways to improve air quality and to meet the standards like wildfire mitigation are prevented by red tape and litigation. Meanwhile, important provisions Congress enacted 50 years ago, requirements to consider the negative welfare and public health impacts of standards implementation have been totally ignored. Yet these requirements are more important than ever. H.R. 7650 takes practical steps to update the Clean Air Act so it can work for people, not against them. It elevates the role of EPA's co-regulators to states in setting air quality standards. It makes essential reforms to encourage proactive steps to mitigate wildfires, a major source of emissions. It provides authority to ensure standards are attainable after confirming they are protective of public health. It puts in measures to avoid harmful public health effects ignored by EPA. It protects the states from being punished for emissions they cannot control. It requires the agency produce guidance and regulations to help states implement air quality standards. It creates a process for the states to work proactively with the EPA to develop acceptable state implementation plans and provides time to reduce permit gridlock over PM standards. Simply put, H.R. 7650 helps states implement health standards. Unfortunately, these practical reforms have been clouded by a sea of partisan talking points. Like a broken record, our Democratic colleagues will assert that we are putting polluters over people, undermining public health, and harming at-risk communities. Contrary to these baseless talking points, we should look at the facts. To produce metals and metal products, the U.S. is approximately 20% less emissions intensive with respect to nitrogen oxides, 30% less intensive in terms of, of volatile organic compounds, and 47% less intensive for particulate matter. We also already have the high standards in the world by a large margin. Rather than building on our excellence and supporting the economic development that brings vitality to our communities, the Biden administration is ignoring the law of diminishing returns and plowing forward with punitive air quality measures such as the revised PM 2.5 standard and the so-called good neighbors rule. Regarding PM 2.5, 25 states, half the country have sued the EPA. For the good neighbor rule, 23 state implementation plans were denied and 12 states are now before the Supreme Court seeking a stay. These entities are the agency's co-regulators. So much for cooperative federalism, this is not how the Clean Air Act is supposed to operate. H.R. 7650 updates the Clean Air Act so it serves its role to help states implement health standards and ensure opportunity and prosperity for their citizens. I urge my colleagues to support the Air Quality Standards Implementation Act of 2024, and I yield back.